Hey everybody, thanks for joining me again uh, for another FaceTime video. Uh, today I want to talk to you about three-point lighting and I want to talk about what we're thinking about when we're rendering a three-dimensional subject in two-dimensional space like video or film. Three-point lighting is designed to give us uh, a benchmark or a place to start lighting our subject without consideration of what the environment is offering in terms of illumination or what our backgrounds look like behind our subject. Three-point lighting just gets us started in lighting the talent uh, and using basic visual clues like the shape of our talent's face, uh, the color of the wardrobe, uh, skin tone, and also the tone of the script, uh, the scene that we're lighting for. We want to have some idea, we want to render in a, some way that reinforces uh, the tone of the script, as well as giving pleasing or accurate rendering to our subject. So three-point lighting is the way to render three-dimensional object in two-dimensional space. And in three-point lighting, we use three fixtures. We've been talking about this in class. A key light, <clears throat> the primary uh, job of the key light is to define the shape texture and color of our subject, and it also provides a baseline for exposure for our camera settings. The key light, the fill light, the second light in our scenario, which controls the contrast of a situation. If the key light is defining the shape and creating a difference between highlight and shadow, then the fill light, as it adjusts contrast, is adjusting the density of shadows. And then an edge light, the third light in our three-point lighting scenario, is designed to separate our subject from the background. So it gives us a little bit of a liner or a little bit of a, a definition of the profile or the overall shape of the face without affecting any of the overall detail that the key light and the fill light are affecting from the front. So what we're gonna do right now is a quick hard light demonstration with three lights. I have a 650 watt focusable Fresnel. I have a, and I have two 1K lights working in the background. One of them is already on behind Kayla deep in the background so that we have at least a little bit of value for you to begin seeing as we build this lighting setup. So what I want to do is I want to establish a key. If I don't know where to start, I'll take a standard textbook key light position which is 45 degrees off axis from the camera and slightly above eye level and we'll add a key light in that position and see what kind of value we get on Kayla. Watch your eyes. So this is 650 watts, focusable Fresnel. Oliver, we have a focusable Fresnel in the fixture so we can change the spread or the beam angle of that fixture. Can you show us really quick what it looks like when we spot in and pull it out? Spotty. Notice how the value increases, especially on the high side with the focusable Fresnel. If, for, if I called for a 650 watt light on the set and it turned out it wasn't bright enough to create exposure, uh, or wasn't going to be bright enough for what I knew the overall uh, lighting scheme was going to require, I could spot that light and get a little extra intensity out of it. But what I sacrifice is coverage in the overall scheme of things. I've narrowed the beam angle on the 650, so it's pretty much located topically right around Kayla's head and shoulders. But I don't think we need to spot it at this point. I think we can flood it out. Flooding. And I'm going to check with my light meter. That's good. Full flood. Thank you, sir. I'm going to check with my light meter, and my light meter is telling me at ISO 800, at 24 frames a second, that that key light represents a 5, 6 and a half, uh, and that's the setting for our lens. Okay? And 5, 6 and a half uh, might be too bright, might not be uh, bright enough. At this point, I think 5, 6 and a half might be just a hair too bright. So we'll take a reduction scrim. We have a couple of choices. Let me see those really quick. We have a couple of choices for light reducing scrims. We've got, uh, this looks like a, uh, a double. We have a couple of doubles here and we have a single scrim. Now a, a double scrim uh, is designed to reduce the output of the light by uh, 50%. So if I have a five, six and a half coming out of my, my 650 watt light and I drop a double in front of that light, we should have a four, and a half. So if we drop that in there, let's see what we get. <coughs> Double down. Thank you, sir. And we have a four and a half. 
Now four and a half I think is probably a little too dark. A couple of the cameras need a little bit more light. So we're gonna add a half a stop back by swapping out the double for a single. The single reduces the output by 25%. And double out. That should give us a hard single five six. Out. And that's exactly a hard five six. So <clears throat> With hard incandescent lights, this is how we affect our exposure. Now, the other adjustment we can make with the tweeny is we can check and make sure that we have this key light in the right spot. So if we start moving this key light to three o'clock on our shot clock, if the cameras are at six o'clock and the background is at 12 o'clock, we are now gonna put our key light at three o'clock and see if we like the results from that. This is kind of a typical Rembrandt style or Rembrandt look. We talk about uh, classic uh, art and Rembrandt lighting quite frequently in class. And this is one of the earmarks of Rembrandt lighting. We get a golden triangle under the low side eye. We get a nice shadow fall off on the low side of the face. And we get a nice, uh, beautiful uh, key light value on the full side of the face. And that identifies the shape of the cheekbones and the chin, the eyes and the forehead. Now, we have a half blue fixture on the background already, which is helping to set Kayla off from her background. But to finish the look, to finish the overall definition or shape of Kayla's face, we might add an edge light, which will give her a little bit of a liner and separate her from her background. Daniel, snap your light on for me. Eyes. Now, we've got a little bit of an edge light here, and we can control how much or how thick this edge light is by moving the beam angle of the backlight. So if we move your light about six feet, eight feet that way, basically behind that sandbag, and go about five feet backwards from that. Right behind that sandbag. And reorient on Kayla. There we go. That's probably a little bit more sensible backlight. I don't want it to encroach on the nice shape that we've created on Kayla's face to the front with our key light. So we moved our backlight a little deeper into the background so that all we have now is a nice hair light and a nice little bit of separation from her background. Okay. Now, this is only two lights plus a third light working on the background. Three point lighting is generally a key light, a fill light, and an edge light. Now, if I wanted to, I could add a proactive fill light right here to affect some of the contrast happening on Kayla's low side. If we use a light in the same fashion we need to control the exposure so we'll be using scrims to knock it down and possibly moving the light backwards and forwards until we get the appropriate exposure or I can just use something handy like a bounce board and I can take whatever light I've got available probably a little spill from the key and I can lower the contrast on her low side <clears throat> by offering a little reflected bounce back into the situation. Now if I do that I have to be careful to not be in shot, okay, so I might have to be as far back as here, but I can still get a little bit of something on there which changes the overall contrast of Kayla's face quite considerably actually with this bounce. It's doing a nice job. It all depends on your taste and it depends on the script. Uh, whether or not you want to add this much fill. When you add fill and you open up the value of your exposure, you start introducing certain psychological connotations to your lighting. The brighter and more even and lower the contrast, generally the more positive or happy the feeling. So if this was a romantic comedy, I probably would add the fill light. I might go stronger than the bounce board and add a fill light. If this is a dramatic piece, I might add the bounce and just back it up until I just get a subtle amount in there to lower the contrast some. If this was, uh, I don't know, a murder mystery or a horror film, I might leave Kayla's low side completely alone and leave the fill side alone and not offer any fill at all to keep the contrast high. I might also manipulate her backlights a little bit. Sean, if we turn your backlight around, pull your blue gel off and offer a second edge light to Kayla from your position. Now 
we can add a second edge light, and then if we go ahead and add some more screws to this guy from the front, make another double. Let's load another one up in there. Let's see what another one is. You know, it'll give us. Got a single. Is that another double? Single. No, so we got uh, two and a half stops in there now? We will, yeah. Yep. Okay. Are we starting to see now our second edge light developing against the background? Yeah, I think so. And Sean, March is about five feet closer. There we go. And reorient on Kayla there. That's good. All right. And what we're starting to get, I don't know if you can see it or not, is we're starting to develop a little bit of an extra, an extra kiss of value on this cheekbone on this side. This is called a double back cross. And if I do this, a lot of times what I can do is I can take this now becomes a front fill light and we can come around right off camera right with that guy. I think two legged against the, uh, yeah. Watch your eyes. And if we raise that guy, let's break its neck a little bit, tilt it down some. And we'll raise it up about two feet. Let's see what we get. We can start introducing a totally different look by manipulating this front. It was the key light. I've now turned it into a fill light, and I'm using a double back cross as my key light. If Kayla turns and addresses action happening over here off camera left, you can see that this background light starts to open her up and create more of the shape on her face, which is more like what a key light's designed to do. If you turn and address me over here, Kayla, this backlight is starting to do what the key might ordinarily do. Uh, this is a classic horror lighting setup. And if we were to knock the value of that down even more, go ahead and turn back the camera. If we were to knock the value of that, that light down even more, um, why don't we hold a little something in front of it, like a silk, maybe. See what happens. That's really getting dark now. We'd have to pull the wire out to, to do the silk, but you get the idea. We can start changing the value of the what the light looks like by manipulating the position of the key light. Go ahead and pull the silk back out. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and pull the wire back out as well and, and move that key light to a couple of more spots and see, uh, see what the effect is. Sean, if you can go ahead and whack your light back onto the background and go ahead and add your blue, blue gel back to that. Let's pull out your scrims and let's add some of that diffusion we've got in here. We've got some 216, which is full white diffusion. And we're just going to peg this to the barn doors, I think, and see what happens when we reduce the output of the light, again, by 50%, but by using gel instead of a scrim. Now, when you use diffusion gel instead of a scrim, you're going to get a softer output in that fixture. Watch your eyes. And you're going to get a lower contrast as well. And that's starting to look very interesting on Kayla right there. If we come around now, keep it nice and high, but come around right uh, camera right of our insert camera, which is basically uh, six o'clock on our shot clock and almost full frontal on Kayla from that position. Now, if we go ahead, Sean, wing your, back, your double back cross in. Now we've got another look all together. This is approaching what comedy lighting is trying to achieve by having an even front fill and a double back cross so that if you guys each add a piece of uh, 251 diffusion to your backlight, 
if Kayla decides to move within this space, she's got a great deal of range that she can move in when the double back crosses are covering her. If she looks my way, she's covered. She looks in the direction of another actor, she's covered. And if she wanders in this space, she has a great deal of range of movement that she can affect because we have flat front fill going on in the double back cross. And then we just soften up the effects of the double back cross by adding diffusion to our back bites. Now we started our exposure at a 5.6 and what we're probably going to have to do in order to finish the effect of making this a comedy lighting setup is now open our lenses and key uh, at a 2.8. <clears throat> and when we do that, we should get more of the comedy looking effect. What I'd like to show you now is I'd like to modify our key light. In other words, I'd like to change the output quality of the key light and continue to use my backlights and my background light and just show you the effects of changing the key light out from a hard source to we've gone to a diffuse soft source. I'd like to go to a soft box or a light modifier and show you the effects of adding a soft box to the key light. <clears throat> 